So in this video, I'm talking about normal distribution. I don't particularly like normal distribution. I've been trying to figure out why, and I think it's because it's the first thing in math that doesn't have a clear proof or motivation. Everything else kind of throughout high school math, early college, um, uh, if taught well, you can clearly tell where that's coming from. Normal distribution, you kind of can't. It's a very complicated formula, appears out of thin air. Um, everyone kind of knows the picture. There's normal distribution. This is just a funny poster. Uh, by paranormal distribution. Anyways, everyone knows this picture, um, and everyone kind of knows that real life data tends to cluster like this, is, is the general thing that I think people know. Um, so much so that uh, sometimes we make data cluster like this when it doesn't already. Um, that's kind of weird. Um, but in this video, I'm going to talk about what exactly that means for data to cluster like this, what um, when that actually happens. Um, by the way, side note, uh, to make data cluster like this, uh, this is the way grades used to be curved. I don't think anyone really does this anymore. People kind of curve more linearly, um, but uh, I feel like curve is sometimes a positive word now, maybe not so much in the UW math department, uh, but like if this were 40 years ago, if they said the median had to be 2.9, which is certainly not true in this course, but it's true in a lot of courses in the math department, uh, then they would put 2.9 here, and then, you know, like, 3.5 would be, like, here, and 4.0 would be over here. So it's, like, really hard to get grades. It, you know, it'd be really hard to get a 1.0 as well, but really hard to get a 4.0. Um, so this kind of curve uh, was probably not great for grades. Okay, so here's this very complicated and unintuitive formula for normal distribution. Um, like, I don't know, what is this root 2 pi thing? Where did E come? I mean, E shows up everywhere, but still, where did E come from? Uh, why is sigma in two different places? Um, who knows? And what are these things? Okay, so mu is going to be the mean. So you have a bunch of data, x1 through xn, that you've recorded, usually from real life, the mean. It's just the average, add them all up, divide by the total number, and then this sigma is standard deviation. I think most of you have seen this before, but maybe in different um, amounts of exposure. Uh, standard deviation calculates the spread. Uh, sometimes people prefer to look at variance, which is sigma squared. So without the square root, basically. Um, so how far is the data uh, away from the mean? So you take each one, subtract from the mean. Uh, we want to add them up. Uh, we don't want to care about what side of the mean we're on. So we could take absolute value to make them all positive. We're actually going to take squares. That way we, all of these are non-negative. And also we more highly weight things that are farther from the mean. There we go, we've done that, and we want to divide by n, but because we have a sample, so you're never going to measure everyone in the world. Like, say, say you're doing heights. You're not going to ask everyone in the world what their height is. That's 8 billion people. That's too much. You might ask 1,000 people, or, you know, if you have a lot of resources, maybe like 10,000 people what their height is. Um, so that's a sample instead of the population, and uh, we say that uh, the data in a sample is more closely clustered to the mean than the data in the whole population. Uh, so instead of dividing by n, they call this Bessel's correction, they're going to divide by n minus 1. This is very odd, but apparently this accounts for the fact that data in the sample is closer to the mean than we expect. Uh, so, you know, if n is big, this barely changes it at all. Uh, but it changes it enough that Apparently we're good. Okay, um, so why do we care? Why do we care about this? Because it shows up in real life. And the central limit theorem, which we're not going to prove, but there's proof in probability theory. Um, the central limit theorem is the thing that says this shows up a lot. Central limit theorem says if you have random variables, variables that can take on 
multiple values with some probability distribution like we saw in the last video, y1 through yn. These have to be independent and also identically distributed. So all of these y1 through yn have the same distribution graph. If that's true, then the sample mean or average tends towards a normal distribution as we increase the size of the sample. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's look at an example. We're going to roll a fair die 50 times. And then keep track of the average. And then we're going to do this 1,000 times. So that's a total of 50,000 rolls. 50 times take the average, restart. 50 times again, take the average, restart. We're rolling the die 50,000 times. And then you might get a graph. Uh, let me pull up this graph. Hold on, okay. You might get a graph. Oh, this is terrible. Let's see, can we... Make it a graph that looks like this. Okay, so here's an average. Hopefully you can see this number. That's 3.6. So, oh, no. Uh, okay, so the average uh, averages are mostly between 3 and 4. And as you can see, this looks kind of like a normal distribution. Okay. What's cool about the central limit theorem, these have to be identically distributed, but we don't care how they're distributed. So, I don't know, maybe we can roll an unfair die 50 times and take the average, right? So, same unfair die. We can't have n different unfair die, but the same unfair die. 50 times take the average, start over, do it again. 50 times take the average, do that a thousand times. And then you might get a little bit different data. Might look like this. So, you know, average might be a little bit lower. So maybe, maybe it was that die where three showed up more often than it showed in the last video. Um, mean will change, but, and uh, standard deviation will change. So that stretches and, and shrinks the normal distribution graph. But this is still approximately in the shape of a normal distribution. So that's pretty cool. The central limit theorem says as long as we're identically distributed, we don't care what the distribution is, we will see a normal distribution.